the director of clinical services at Boys Town. Not to be confused with Boys Home. home. What about the girls? There's no girls town. I felt so offended. I wanted to quit with you, eh? Oh my god. Wait, Boys Town and Boys Home are two different things? This is your daily catch up. <laughs> So today we have a very special guest, Adrian Sung, the Director of Clinical Services at Boys Town. Hey, welcome, welcome to the welcome. show! Thank you! <laughs> <laughs> wow, you can't believe what you're doing. She burned me in the first two seconds. <laughs> Boys Town. Boys Town. Which is not to be confused with Boys Home. Home. Yeah. Correct. So what Different. do you do at Boys Town? <laughs> Uh, well, I am the director for clinical services. Mm, so, uh, big name, right? Mm. Basically, is look after all the gina law, I guess. Mm. <laughs> like literally yeah. the... Like no, your... no, okay. I don't work directly <laughs> with the boys, but I work with the staff who, who looks after not only the boys, but we have other services. So, right. Boys Town is very different from Boys Home. Yeah, I always... Can you give us a <laughs> summary of the difference? Sure, sure. I think first you look at location. Boys Town is at Upper Bukit Tima, mm. whereas uh, Boys Home is at Jurong. I see. And the difference is that uh, the boys in Boys Town, they come from um, a range of various reasons uh, why they are sent there. We started off as a war orphanage. After the war, we opened up the home for the orphans. Oh. Yeah, a lot of people, okay? All my staff, every time I say, can you change name? Can you change name? Because yeah. People think every time boys are uh, town, they all bad boys, naughty boys. Yeah, it does. It yeah. does it Which is, like, is the boys' home. Yeah, like, I think boys' home right? is a home run by the government. So, like, you know, the cases that you read about, sometimes the news, they get sent to boys' home. So, it's a reformatory home, you know? Right. Where they're sent there because of their sentence. Uh. Usually delinquent behavior or out of yeah, control by parents. Yeah, that kind of stuff. I correct. see. And you know, unfortunate events that leads them there, poor decisions. So, let's say traditionally <sighs> in Boys' Town, right? When I first started out as a caseworker, Mm. Uh, I, I we had compassionate cases. So we do have families who say, I need you to help me look after the boy because the mother disappeared or, you know, the parents pass away suddenly. So we will take these kids on compassionate ground then give them education. Then they will study in one of our schools. La. So what is the minimum age that you can take a, a child in? Officially 10. So but before you say have, officially. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, <laughs> occasionally, uh, one uh, nine six. plus will come in. Uh, I see, occasionally. I see, I see. Uh, uh, yeah, because... Uh, compassionate uh, grounds. Yeah, are. I guess if you think of a residential home, it's a group home, right? Mm, yeah. So sometimes if they're too young, you know, they're not able to take the stress. So what about the girls? Uh, <laughs> girls, at this moment, we only have girls in our fostering service and our youth reach and our clinical intervention, other services got girls. So right. boys town. But only take boys to stay in headquarters. Remember so I there's said no there's girls town. Services. Girls town don't have, but there are other girls homes available. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. I mean, it start by priest lah. So not nice Correct for them to adopt Correct. girls lah. And so from, from boys town, how does, how does one enter? And then how does one graduate? Uh, at this present moment, in the last few years, we are now gazetted home, which means that <clears throat> we actually signed a contract with the government, an agreement with the government, and they place their kids there with us. I see. So most of the kids are what we call the, the kids with some trauma issues. Mm. So they're the child protection cases that comes in. I see. Mm. So abusive family, for example. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, that's so, where you come in. I know, right? I see, yeah. I see. So, so my job is very easy. Man. My job is hire people and people will look after them. There is another director that looks after residential, but I look after the other clinical services that looks after the community kids. So one of the vibrant ones will be youth reach that goes out there to street to look at street kids. Mm. Street, street kids? kids. What is a street <laughs> kids? Um, kids who hang out past midnight, sepa takro, smoke, or whatever they're doing there. I feel like I was a street kid before. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so the youth reach van will come kind of drive around and then they will make, check, check you up. They ask you to follow Instagram. Oh, <laughs> what? Mine was police. <laughs> <laughs> There's a van who shows uh, yeah, up we, to we the do, street kids yeah, and then we, I mean, ask them to follow Instagram. I mean, long time ago, you know people get binge drunk. Right. right at Zook and all these other places. So the van yep. would, some lorry, you know, won't believe it. They drive and they pick up these kids. Oh, that is a bit scary. Yeah, like, you're drunk and they're just washing it. Yeah, the road, the one's good. Load them up. <laughs> then the two of them swing. One tree. No, la, we're like, hello, hello, are you okay? That kind of thing. They right, offer right, right. drink, you know. Sober a little bit. Because dangerous, la, these girls. 
or guys lying down there on the streets, you know. I, I'm, I'm trying to piece together, right? Yeah. So, for example, if the government does deem that there is a minor that um, is in need of rehoming at, at Boys Town, mm. so at some point, if the parents don't qualify to home them back into their own house, yeah. then what yeah. happened? So, the social worker will work very hard to try to either integrate them home. If not home, will be kinship home. Like uh, an uncle, auntie. Foster. Oh, oh, okay, 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 yeah, okay, okay. Uncle, okay. auntie that can take care of them, right? Then if not, then really bopian, right? Then they stay in the hostel. For independent living, then age out by 24. But then, what happens at 24? Like at 24, I haven't yeah. a BTO yet. Eh? 24, <laughs> if you haven't, then generally we will rent rent like HDB flat. And I a, park, a room. Then we'll probably sponsor, like, you know, give them a head start, like three months. Okay. Then let them okay. continue after that. Really, wow, that's really so costly. God. That's insane. Yeah, I know. But really, really thank God. I mean, now these days, we do have places where they can go to. Some of them will live with one another. Oh, so cute. And crash on each other's oh, like roommates. Yeah. Yeah. You mentioned that you were a caseworker, right? Yeah, I started out as a caseworker. And how long ago was it? Like, what oh, year was it? I don't know if you were born or not. 1997. March. 20, I think I, oh, I counted 27. I was primary one. <gasps> Oh my goodness, such a baby. So <laughs> I feel nice about that. <laughs> actually, actually, you can be my kid. Oh. You can be my son. No, but I, I guess the question yeah. is like, why do you even choose to get into this uh, job in the first oh. place? Like, oh, was a caseworker like something that you wanted to do? No, no. Actually, I graduated um, with a psychology degree. You know, with this great ambition that I'll be a psychologist, right? Then when I came back to Singapore, it was like, nope, you need a master's. Then I'm like, huh? Quite out there. Still must study. Yeah. And I was like, mm hmm. You get, <laughs> then the parents are like, hey, pay so much money, you better go get a job. Fine. So right. get, get a job first, law, before I figure out. So this is my first job, eh? Oh my. <laughs> you know, right? I, I think it was a good journey, 27 uh, years of just being in an organization, but doing different things, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I started a caseworker, so I managed like 40 boys, you know, at that time. Then after that, convert. La. So I was like school counsellor at one point, helping out in other agencies to start up online counselling right. at one point. Then I was rotating, doing education in Boys Town, doing volunteer work. Basically, everything under the sun that the organisation had, I go and try long. Except uh, the corporate services. Haven't tried them one yet. But I can mm. imagine like when you first start out, right? Like, yeah. okay, la, sure, I study all these like, like uh, theories in school and all mm. that kind of stuff. And suddenly you are like thrown into managing 40 boys who uh, all have their own different kind of troubles and all that kind of stuff. Like, what's the learning curve? Steep. Uh, steep. steep. <laughs> but then later when you look beyond, right, the colour, look beyond who they are, you recognise that, yes, mm. you know, they're humans, they're, they're humans. struggling. You probably need a little bit, bit gentler with them because there is this whole facade that they put up. Mm. Because mm. they've been hurt, right? So yep. they're not going to go home vulnerable, bleeding heart to say, I want to tell you my story. They don't, right? So you need to win them over. So I used to have an analogy where I used to tell people, you know, they're like cats, you know, little kittens. When you pick up a stray kitten, now don't have. When we first got them, right, they would be very fierce. Like that, right? <laughs> no, that's a very good impression. Right. Of a cat. So, so then they were like, eh, them are grateful. I mean, I used to think, so I'm grateful. Now I pick up from the, pick up from the market and you still can treat me like yeah. that. But then in a week or two, right, then they become cute and ambles along. I yeah. think that's what trauma does. That when you're traumatized, right, the first is fight. Yeah. You know, the limbic breath, fight, flight, freeze, frenzy, right? You fight, you know. Then when they know they're safe, then they calm down and they become the little kitten. So it's the same in boys now. When they first come, it's an adaptation. You leave your family, then you go into the whole big mess, or so under the lungs, so many people, right? Mm. And then you get to eat what time, sleep what time, bathe mm. what time, yeah. exercise what time, go do homework or not. Wow, suddenly so this whole barrage of different parents come to you, right? Then you become the kitten now. <laughs> <laughs> In the last time I did this on, on Zoom, right? Somebody got traumatized. So I apologize <laughs> to all those. It's like, meow. But were there any like cases that were, you know, like stuck with you like after since 1997, that kind of one? Yeah. Without breaking confidentiality, right? Sure. Uh, okay, so this one case, I journeyed with him from the start, you know, 13 years old, he came in, 12 plus, And he left me all the way at 17. At 13 years old, I won't believe it. Long time ago when I started work, there's something called eight days. <laughs> no. 
Okay, now I feel old. Okay. Magazine, yeah. okay, magazine. Yeah. And then like, it's very They're still around. Oh, okay. Oh, no, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You'll read me? Oh, okay, yeah, anyway. all the time. So this is eight days, right? That, that you get it, right? Uh, I think on certain days. But if you're lucky, you get it on a Saturday. I happen to get it on a Saturday. So it's crisp eight days, you know? Mm. Then I put it in my cupboard. That time I worked Saturdays. Then I was seeing another boy. Then when it came out, I was like, hey, how come my cupboard like open? You know? Oh no, he right? took it. Then I went, hey, I remember this fella came in. We we didn't lay a hand on him, okay? But we persuaded him like, hey, better return. Uh, da, da, da. We tried the soft way. We tried the scary mm. way, you know, with our fierce voice, but didn't work, right? And finally he said, okay, fine. Then when he gave it back to me, right, it was crumpled. Uh, I cry, you know. I, you, I feel like a loser saying this now. But I was so upset, you know. I said, Saturday eight days. I know, it was a Saturday eight days. It was Chris. You know, I haven't read Reddit yet. And here's this fella crumple. You know why he crumple, right? Because he probably shoved it in his pants and ran yeah. out of my room. Then I felt so offended, right? Then I felt like, ew, so gross. Man. He put, where did he shove it? Mm. You know? Oh my God. Yeah, then I wanted to quit with you. Eh. That, that was the first time. How I was old like, were you then? Uh, 20, 20, younger than 25. La. I see. I mean, he stole my money too, but never mind. That was not the point, right? <laughs> it was my eight days. I was very fixated about eight it. Eight days is more important. It was about two dollars, very... thirty cents. No, it was the fact that I ha- I didn't read it first. I mean, I went to process this yeah, yeah. and I said, "Hey, much I didn't read it first, right?" And then he got compel it, you know. Then he take it without my permission. If I read it first, right, he take it. I'm okay, you know. Somebody <laughs> took my eight days. Okay. Yeah. So so I was, okay lah. That was then okay. But as I continue working with him, he had a multiple series of fences and all that. Right. Then I even went to boys home to visit him at one time because he got breached, right? right? So then he came out. Also, you know, if, in and out, if, in and out. If one in Boys Town, you, your delinquency then, cannot be managed if they pass Then, yeah, because he was, he was under back an then, order la. La, back then, right? Okay. So journey further, further, right, right? I remember this significant thing, right? This is where I know I'm quite forgiving. Uh. When I was 16, okay? <laughs> okay? You, you, no, wait. When he, when, he he was, when he was 16, I think this is real, okay? When he was 16, I remember he was going home. Then I'm like, oh, okay, you know, take care. I'll see you on Monday uh, when you come back. You say, okay, okay, Ken. One hour later, when I'm on my way out for another event, right? My boss called me. He said, hey, so-and-so called you. So I picked up the handphone and I, hey, you know what I heard? I heard him crying. Then I said, okay, what happened? Cannot say right. Then I said, where are you now? He said, at home. Then I said, stay there. I'm coming. There are certain housing estates that are quite scary. It's one of those like long corridor. Duck, 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 one. I saw him at the side, sitting at the landing, right? Like, like that lah, you know? Then I know, okay, he's safe. I looked corner, right? Then I saw, wow, the gate was open, but the gate was locked, that lock. Yeah. Oh. And then, oh, wet, wet, black, black. Huh? Then I knew, somebody burned his house. Oh my God. Are we talking about, yeah. like, oh loan sharks? Well, I think so. Can you imagine, you know, he walked home, he eh, went like that. Then he tried to call, call his relatives, but nobody picked up. Right. Of course, he panicked. La. Then I just looked at him. I said, hey, let's go home. Mm. Then he just let me bring him to Boys Town. And the whole ride back, we didn't say anything. Except me telling him, it will be okay. We got your back. Mm. That's why I knew I was forgiving. I could have remembered <laughs> it. it. <laughs> and daily daily. You know, I, I, didn't know. <clears throat> I thought yeah. where this was going was that he bought you uh, eight days, days and returned to you. No, no, actually time it's to. true. You are listening. You know? It's still time to. You can send out a link. It's free now, no more. I should... I should text him and say, no, now he lives in Thailand, I think. Oh. I see. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so as someone that studied psych- psychology, right? I yeah. mean, to an extent, it's fascinating, but to an extent, we also know that mm, psychology can make good money, right? With that in mind, you stuck in social service for, for this long. seven years, yeah. Mm-hmm. Do, do you not sometimes think about... Private practice? Yeah. Going full-time? Uh... Yeah, but then that would be so boring, I feel, if you do only one job. It's one thing to make a lot of money. Yeah. Right? It's one thing to buy a very fancy house. But it's a different thing to build homes for people. Mm. I always feel that. I say, well, joining the social service may not be able to buy you uh, the bungalow house. Okay. Joining most things cannot buy you the bungalow <laughs> yeah. house. Uh. It's true. You know, may not, right? May not. But it can give you a, a wonderful home, a wonderful feeling. Uh, knowing that, you know, you did help another person. Yeah. So I think personally why I continue staying where I am is because of the mission that was handed down to me from my predecessors. It's interesting because I feel like there are many people that come out in their early 20s, right? And then they also realize that they don't want to sit at their table for 9 to 5 and do something else, right? And then they always feel like, oh, I want something more interesting, can do different things every day. Meaningful. Mm. Not even that, wow. I feel like. <laughs> as in, especially during my time. La. My time meaningful is something that you do on the side. La. That's like, oh, yeah, like one year older than me. We're very clear that we want to work, we want to make money, but we don't want work to be so draining, correct? And so, 
the options in my time uh, was that if you want every day to feel a bit different, you can join marketing. You oh. can join events. They did both. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Why thought that's true? Because like, you don't understand. I mean, now I spent eight hours. <laughs> it's funny how life works. <laughs> It finds you la. No, but it it's interesting you. that social service is also one of these. Then, like, I, I never thought about it. Are more people joining the industry <laughs> now? Like, do you see a lot of people also like switching mm. industries to to join this sector? I think we do see a lot, a few more mid career switch. Ooh. Because I think the government does have options for like mid career switch social workers, yeah. mid career switch uh, social uh, practitioners. They call SSPs la, social service practitioners. So we, we do have mid careers coming over then rescaling them and coming yeah. up. So, yeah, yeah, we do. Because increasingly, yeah. you think about it, there's very few companies that you can serve and then you feel like, got purpose. Ah. Correct. Got you know, at the end of the day, even Correct. if they are meaning very flighty, you want to enable global banking, ah, they want to bank the bankless. You oh, know, the cashless marketing also. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When you get down to it, ah, you're just forcing people to open bank account the and they don't need another bank account yeah, or yeah, something like that, you know? Yourself, uh, yeah. But this one's interesting. Yeah. in Because you're working with lies. I was looking online at a Reddit thread as well. And yeah. then I saw this list of questions that if you answer like mostly yes to, then you it kind of indicates that you are like not suited to be a social worker. Oh, let's really? go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, you yeah. try? Try? Do I answer also? Wait, wait, who answers? Uh, we, we all, all answer. We all answer. Yeah. Okay. And then we see yeah. whether we but you, you, you can judge the question and see whether it's correct. Also, this is yeah. on Reddit. La, oh. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. The source is trust me, bro. La. <laughs> question one. Do you feel irksome when people knowingly choose to make decisions which screw up their lives? Like smoking. Yes. Sir, no. Do you feel a strong need to reform people when you think they are going the wrong path? Yes. Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> Do you frequently worry for others? Yes. yes. Do you find it irritating that you have to patiently explain to people why their ways are irrational? No. No. So those are the four questions and you get how many yeses? <laughs> Two. Mostly. You mostly yes. Then you're not cut out to be social worker. I also mostly yes. Ah, yeah. oh, really? I want to according, according to, trust me bro, he said like, if, really? you, if you ask yourself these questions yeah. and you answer yes, yes. to all of them, you cut out, right. then you are not cut not out cut to out. be a social worker. Why? Because as a social worker, your job is not to inspire clients or fix their lives. Your job is to link them to resources, give advice and planning to help them make informed decisions and respect oh. their decisions. Yeah, yeah. Even yeah. if you may personally object to those decisions. Correct. I said no to most of them. Lucky. I'm in the right. You know, you have to right. change guests eh, on the spot. <laughs> but what are your thoughts on that? Like, is there an ideal archetype of a person to, to, to join the sector per se? I would say yes to an extent. For example, if you're a bit more short tempered and you're a bit more controlling, uh, maybe go get some education and get some therapy first before you join the sector. Because when you're working with lives, right, it's really at their pace. Mm. I always joke you know, with my clients. I say, you know, sometimes I wish I could take your head, uh, zip out, take the brain, wash, and pull back in, uh, zip. Uh, then, okay, everything will be fine. But it's not. <laughs> yeah, Fortunately, yeah, Fortunately, it doesn't work that way, right? Yeah, so yeah, so yeah. what you need to do is really just walk through <clears throat> with the individual at their own pace and you have to suspend your own aid judgment and your own timing. So I've spoken to a few social workers actually. Oh. And one of the things that they do bring up um, occasionally is burnout. How does somebody working in the industry navigate this on their own? Like if I'm new to the industry, so maybe I don't know, I don't understand, right? How do I even know if I'm like taking on too much or I'm going to burn out? Psychologically speaking, how you know, you will probably look at how languishing you are. Essentially, you just feel like while you still understand the mission of the work, the idea of, oh, needing to get to do it right, a bit like super sien. And have you ever... Group group. As, of as course, someone that, that of course. help people work through burnout, possibly. Yeah, of course. But if I if I take social service, right, I would say not only social workers are the people that burn out. Mm. You also could look at people who provide therapy, people who work also directly with kids. Like in, in Boys Town, they're called youth specialists. So they also, every day, day in, day out, right, the same group of boys or different group of boys, it can take a toll on yourself. If the bleeding heart comes where, can I do more, can I do more, can I do more? Yeah, I think you can. The answer is yes, you can. But at what cost? There must be boundaries, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah I think that's the word. Yeah. It might seem very cruel to draw a boundary, like, oh, how can we leave our patients behind while we go and let's eat, uh, you know, Michelin star ramen while they're suffering, right? Yeah. But we also <laughs> need to know this, that when you are there in your job, for that hours, number of hours, you do the best that you can. Mm. And that's all you, you can within that stipulated time. Outside of that, you need to give yourself the permission to enjoy what you enjoy. Because if not, right, 
you're not going to be able to step back in the next day oh sorry yeah to do the same job <laughs> yeah yeah so i guess what works for me personally i i feel is that that time away from work before covid i used to travel quite regularly okay like maybe once every two months i go somewhere to refresh myself damn no <laughs> handphone nothing just short trips you know bangkok lah you just go there and go crazy right <laughs> my don't eat, don't eat, my don't eat, don't eat, sleep, you know. Or go Hong Kong, also ah, my don't eat, don't eat, my don't eat, don't eat, sleep, you know. And then Japan is eat, 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 eat. So I guess each one of us must find a different way to basically replenish our energy. More importantly, is that don't bring your work home, lah. Mm. Yeah, because I do know some of my younger workers would bring their home, whether it's psychologists, counselors, social workers, right? They are so You know, they feel so burdened by all the issues, right, of their clients. They bring it home, but you bring home so you can't do anything, what, right? Right? Mm. Someone told me this before, and I tried it. Find a significant tree like on your tree, way to work. Yeah. Su, su. Wow. Okay. Su. <clears throat> one of the Singapore got so many trees, right? We plant so many, right? Find a big one now, okay? Find a big tree. So what you do is when you leave work, right? Visualize putting all your work issues on the tree and say bye bye. See you tomorrow. Then when you chow chow lah. Then when you come back, all the next day when you come back to work, right? Then you pick up from the tree and then you go back, lah. Right. Where possible, mm. right? Learn to distance your work from your your own life. But in your industry, it's agree. so difficult. Eh? Can be done because the fellow maybe got problem call you at night when you're at home. Then you can no. That's don't why you answer. don't give your private number. Okay. Yeah, there are multiple okay. hotlines in Singapore. SOS as hotline, IMH as a hotline. Mm. In case of emergency, you already tell your client, "Hey, if I can't, right, these are the things." So you need to know that your clients are also quite resilient. Because mm. they only see you like that once a month or maybe once every two weeks, right? The bulk of their time, they're not with you, eh? Mm. But they're still alive, eh? Yeah. Correct. I mean, crisis will come up. You, as long as you are responsible to say, hey, in case anything happen, call this number. You give them the option, right? They, it's for them to exercise. Yeah. Yeah. So I, it's dangerous, I like, if, agree if, with you. if every time you feel like, oh, they call me, I must pick up the phone, I must, you know, where possible you can, but if you can't, right? Mm. Then always make sure that they have somebody else that they can. Refer to. If I'm not wrong, one of them was telling me that every month her organizations, their supervisors have to check in on them, just to make sure like, are you okay or not, or, mm. or are you is are you taking on too much or do you need help and all that. In, mm. But not so much like them re- being required to go through like their own forms of therapy and whatnot. I think every agencies will have their own plans to you know to prevent you know massive burnout and pre- prevent staff turnover. To the best of our abilities, I think I can only speak for my agency. What we have mm. done so far is you know how when you have you're married, you have kids, you do have childcare leave, right? Mm. So we find that for those who are not married yet, we give them family care leave. If you are studying, we have study leave that's offered to you. And then if you serve for five years, there's something new that we came out. We call it the sabbatical leave scheme. Then you get 10 days off, just go anywhere and then you get like a certain sum of money to go and study if you want to, to refresh yourself. But oh, ultimately, nice. I think what's important is that the bosses all recognize that people are valuable, your staff are valuable. We find whatever means we can to be a bit more flexible in some of the struggles that they face and you know, yeah. know when to press them and know when to also give them the space to, to chill. You know? Yeah. I always had this impression that social service, or not say social service per se, like if you work for a company that does social service, mm. be it their HR or whatever, you can yeah. be their marketing team also, man, right? All right. And I have a friend, and I remember she was just very early in her career. She changed job to go and join one of the those SSAs, social I don't know, service I, agency. I think so. Mm. And I was like, ah, huh, why? Too, like very early, you know. Um, I feel like you should make your mark, maybe your money first, maybe lah, right? Because it's a, it's a personal friend of mine, ma. Then I, go, I found out her salary more than how much I pay myself in this company last time. The money not bad. Oh, the oh. money really not bad. Not bad, right? Yeah, yeah. It's above median, lah. Really, yeah. I yeah. feel like that's a common misconception eh, with it the is, industry. It is, but no, it's quite open. I mean, not everybody yeah. will be above median, lah. Presumably, Correct. I mean. Got got a range lah. Got a range. I, I think the perception because it's social service poor thing, right? That people are paid like peanuts and and cannot afford this, cannot afford that. But if you look at the range, right? Like quite wide lah. You have even the therapist salary guidelines, psychologist guidelines. They the NCSS does have quite a yeah. fair range, mm. right? Because they don't want to get the leftover talent, right? They also yeah, want the best people, right? Yeah, because building population, everyone is fighting for the same group of people, right? Yeah. yeah. To, to work, right? So they need to, you know, entice. So apparently yesterday, I checked in with them. They say, oh, almost every year they will renew the 
the guidelines, you know, the mm. salary guidelines. Right. To remain competitive. What means your salary is so... Censor that. <laughs> <laughs> She's not denying. Uh. <laughs> I have enough. I, I would Confirm. like to say that, yeah. For, for people looking to, to join social service, right, or to yeah. be part of it, yeah. I think the concern also is that there might not be progression. But seeing uh, that you join as a caseworker, then now you direct to... Of clinical services. That's <laughs> 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 true. Yeah, got, but donated one. My chair donated. I see, I see. Ah. I see. Yeah. So, does progression happen very naturally or you got very lucky? Um, I, I guess it's a bit of both. If I'm not wrong, I think we have advanced quite well in CSS as in we, you know. You can go online to go and check out. There's something called the skills framework. Mm. So that allows you to know like what kind of task is involved, what's the job description and what's required as you advance the different roles. Mm. So if you do have that capability, right, then it actually is detailed there. So your I boss see. cannot bluff you. La. I see. Then oh. It's also very clear in terms of the uh, progression. Let's say you come from caseworker, then you go and study to become a social worker, then next level of social worker, so, uh, senior social worker, lead social worker principal. So it's spelled out very clearly I for see. you. And then also it gives you the salary guidelines. Oh. minimum to maximum. So it's very clear. People walk in knowing that, oh, okay, this is something I should expect. As opposed okay. to going in blind and say, how much are? Ah? So if people yeah. offer you 1,000. Like, what's next? Ah? Correct. So it allows you to have that conversation with your boss to go, hey, according to the guidelines, ah, <laughs> how do I get there? What do you want me, what do you want to see me do in order to get there. I think at my time, it was there, but it was got a bit sketchier. Now we are a lot more specific about the work that's entailed. Because mm. last night it's Paukaleo and everything you do, one big social service. Mm. Yeah, so it's a lot clearer. And then for people, as you advance, right, there are opportunities for you to, to get more involved in NCSS. Like, for example, I'm a social service fellow. So what we do is we take it upon ourselves to mentor the next generation. Right. So I presently have three mentees who are psychologists and who are growing in the sector. So my job is to guide them and lead them, not to offer pay or what, but just to sh steer them like, hey, social service is like that one. Mm. then okay how else can you grow what are the skills you need what are the training you need in order to advance to the next level so this will be the kind of conversations I have in mentoring them right. so people who who think that they have greater talent let's say you join right then you think oh actually I can be director of this organization <laughs> you sign up it's called Sunray program so we take a caliber people who are in the sector and we train them up and then every three years they rotate agencies. Oh, it's like management associate that kind of thing. A yeah. bit like that but we are more atas. We call the sun ray. <laughs> yeah, it's mm. the sun. Got baking vibes. I don't know why. <laughs> right. Yeah, I know, right? Oh, maybe a sunshine. Ah. Sun ray. Yeah. Basically the hope. Lah. You know sun ray come out. Wee! I see, I see, I see. Yeah. The light at the end of the tunnel like that. So, see, see, so, see, so, see. so these are the up and coming people that we invest in right. and then we rotate them. So you can you can find out more about this at the yeah and they, and they have handlers you know who will then look into that then there's something called forty under forty mm. so as long as you are forty years old you'll be one of forty people who who sign on onto this uh, program we expose you to a lot more sectoral work so I think there's even a visit to parliament uh, right and, and meeting of ministers. So these are the up and coming leaders. So constantly you see us, right? Because as with every job, right? Sure, got bleed one, right? Some people burn out, some people mm. go, and, go and join this, join that, right? Yeah, you do see that. We try to hold them. Right. So we, we do have people from the outside coming in too. Mm. Signing up with Sunray and trying to establish leadership and growth. Very good. Sorry, I, I'm looking at your polity. You say social services tribe. Tribe. What is it? That's not, this is not your company, tea, right? Presumably. No, no. I'm representing NCSS today. So we believe that um, it takes a tribe to run the whole ship. Right. It's not one single person. So while social service always misunderstood as social workers only, right? There are a whole lot more people that are behind this to run a social service agency. Like what? Like, for example, for the direct staff, right? You have the social mm. workers, you have the counsellors, you have the youth specialists, you have the occupational therapists, you have the psychologists. The social service also made up of the other corporate people. Manage the books, right. the accounts, HR, the marketing finance, stuff, HR, right? the marketing. I see. The okay, admin, okay. you know. If you have a passion to want to work with people, the disadvantage to lend, okay, a hand and your gifting, Mm. to better their lives, come come and speak to us. And then go onto the website and then you can see the whole range of jobs that are available. Come and take a look, you know. I no, mean, like, don't push my people. La. It'll be much. Won't la. Won't la. La. Be much kind of. You stay, stay where you are, but if you're convinced, <laughs> <laughs> if 
<laughs> but if you're convinced, right, then <laughs> come yeah, and yeah, take yeah, a look, course, you know. Of course, no, no, for humanity. Yeah, your eyes will be open. All right, and that's it for today. This episode was brought to you by NCSS. So big thank you to them, and of course, Adrian for joining us on the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We hope that today's conversation has given you a better idea of what a career in social service looks like. And for more information, you can head down over to the links below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. When I was like doing my homework, right? Checking out on you guys and just binge watching, right? Hey, thanks. Which one of us have mental problem? Uh, later, it's confirmed him. Uh, <laughs> I give you 100 hours free. Wow, that's one thing. Wow, that's so good. That's like $20,000 you're pro, putting on the table. Pro bono, pro bono. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah.